Konnichiwa everyone. <laughs> got a little bit of tomfoolery for you today. Don't have a build video or anything, but I am working on a couple of projects that you're going to see in the near future. But I wanted to do is give you guys a set of guidelines for getting started in Japanese woodworking. Now there are a couple of other people that have talked about the specific types of tools that they use, such as the Samurai Carpenter. Highly encourage you to check that out just for the information's sake, but what we're going to cover here is just the basic stuff not necessarily brands, but just what you actually need to get started in Japanese woodworking. And I'm going to make this as general as possible. I'm not going to get into the different specialized tools for different specialized crafts, just the basics and just the stuff you need to get your feet wet. Now, depending on what you're going to build, you can kind of adjust this list of guidelines and, you know, get some different tools. I would highly suggest you look at the different types of crafts that there are. But anyway, to start off this list, the very first thing you should get is a saw. Yes, the nine and a half inch Ryoba saw is the most useful and most general purpose saw in most of the Japanese woodworking that you'll find yourself doing. Depending on the space that you got, you can get a bigger saw or a smaller saw, and if you want to make bigger projects, you're going to need a bigger saw. But the 9.5 Ryoba, I found, is the most kind of, you know, best of both worlds sort of size. You can get some smaller ones, but if you've got a bigger piece and you need to use something bigger, then this is kind of a good mid-sized, uh, you know, all-around balanced approach to it. And make sure you get a good Ryoba saw. You can get some cheap ones and, you know, it just depends on what you prefer, what your budget is. There's no real wrong budget for this. But make sure you get something at least nine and a half inches. You'll kind of find that will cover all the bases evenly. And next up is a couple of squares. I usually recommend getting at least one kind of tri-square for general work and for checking the planes. And I also recommend getting an adjustable square for, you know, various adjustable reasons. You can think of all the different uses that that may come in handy for. Now you don't necessarily need anything super complicated, but I do also recommend getting some sort of an angle gauge. This is an old machinist, uh, I think this is called an inclinometer. But these are actually pretty handy just for making sure the angles on your things are correct if you're gonna be cutting dovetails, very useful for that. So measuring tools are kind of a general purpose thing. You can pick them up anywhere. Whatever you get, just make sure you get something that's at least 17, maybe 18 inches long for your tri-square and adjustable square. You know, you can kind of make do with whatever you got. Just get what's within your budget and get at least one tri-square and at least one adjustable square. And next on the list is a good hammer. This is called a Daruma hammer. This is a chisel hammer primarily, and they're commonly found in a lot of Japanese shops. You're not going to find these as easily as you're going to find something like a Funate hammer or a Ryoguchi hammer. But the general purpose is kind of the same as the other Japanese hammers. You have a flat face and you have a convex face. And these are nice for driving chisels because that big wide head gives you a lot of space to really, you know, drive it through and do some damage with that. Now, if you're getting a good quality head, it will not come with a handle. Uh, this one is made from Osage Orange. That's a really cool wood if you're not familiar with it. And this is actually just a branch from a tree. I just cut it off and then made it into a hammer handle. But get yourself one in the range of 275 to 375 grams. Should work just about perfect for, you know, just about any general task. Remember, we're just trying to cover all the bases here. If you want to get a heavier hammer, something kind of in this range, then, you know, feel free to. Same kind of deal with this one, except this one's way, way bigger, way heavier. <laughs> I call this one the big trucker because it just tends to really get stuff done. But a couple of hammers or at least one good hammer in that sort of 275, 375 weight range should work great for just about everything you would want to do just getting started out. Now chisels are an entirely different thing and you can get whatever size you want. Japanese chisels are just kind of nice to have and they are a gorgeous, gorgeous thing with the scallop on the back. But the general rule that I have followed is to have one small one and one big one. Now, the purpose of the big one is twofold, not just to cut things that are wider, but also to tune the bottom of planes, and I'll show you how I do that later on. But anyway, two chisels at least, one small one, one big one. The big one you can go, I don't know, 30, 42 millimeters. Small one can be anywhere from 18 to 30. It just kind of depends on what you have available and what your preferences are, but again, there's no wrong size. You just need at least two, one small one, one big one. And the other chisel you should definitely get is a three millimeter chisel of some variety. You don't have to get one this long. This is, I think, a framing length because this thing is huge. But these are absolutely essential and needed for tuning planes. So if you think about it, the small gap on the side of a Japanese plane, it will cut that just perfectly. And you can use it for small little joinery and small little crafts. So make sure you get at least a three millimeter, a little mid-sized one, and a much bigger one. That's really all you need to get started with chisels. Next up is sharpening. Now sharpening is a really, really hot thing in Japanese woodworking. I don't really buy into all of that. I just kind of make do with what I got. But you do need at least one stone and a way to keep that stone flat. So a diamond plate of some variety that will keep your stone decently flat is great. Stone grit is kind of a preference thing. There are two-sided stones, but I recommend keeping it to a absolute minimum 
because once you go down that hole, it's a very, very, very deep and very expensive rabbit hole to buy very nice stones. So keep it simple when you're first starting out, at least one stone and at least one diamond plate. Now of all the things on this list, uh, you can kind of get by with just getting cheaper versions, but the only thing I think you should really spend the money on is one very nice plane. Now this is where I'm just kind of a stickler, but I think that the plane is one of the most important tools you can possibly own. You should not buy a cheap plane to get started because cheap planes tend to take more work to get them set up. They're a pain to get started and they're a pain to get going and they usually are not made to a very high quality. So buy at least one really good plane. This is a 70 millimeter. You can get kind of caught up in the sizes, but I'll be honest, I've really used a 70 for just about everything. The larger the plane is, the more work and the more finicky they are to adjust. Keep that in mind. If you're, gonna, if you're the type of person that is not a patient person, you should not get a larger plane, but if you can handle learning them, Larger plane is definitely rewarding and they're very fun to use, but anything from the kind of 50 millimeter range to that 65 is kind of considered a starting kind of a mid-range size, but I prefer the 70 personally, but again, that's just me. Doesn't mean it's gonna work for your situation. Now, everything else on your list can be as cheap as you want it. You can be on a budget, but the only thing I think that you should absolutely spend the most money on is your plane. This sucker here is the heart of most of Japanese woodworking. This is kind of what sets it apart, just in form and in function. So get a good one, it will last you the rest of your lifetime, and take care of it, it will take care of you. And in addition to that plane, you need a way to adjust it. I do not recommend using a metal hammer on a fine Japanese plane. I use a wooden mallet, this is just a something that I kind of threw together. Nothing too special, it's just a plain old wooden mallet, but the nice thing is with a wooden mallet, you can still get some pretty good adjustments. And the nice thing is you're not gonna put some mushrooms on the back of your plane, and if you do, it's just gonna take a long, long time to do it. However, if I'm adjusting with this guy, I'm gonna really, really mushroom that out pretty fast, so just keep that in mind. You can use a brass hammer too, but I prefer a wood hammer because they're cheap, they're plentiful, and they're easy to replace. Plus, you get a chance to make something kind of fun. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a complete Japanese beginning woodworking toolkit. I wanted to show you earlier what I had mentioned about having a large chisel. Whenever it comes time to tune your plane, a large chisel actually makes a fantastic scraper to tune your plane to whatever you prefer. Saves you a little bit of time, saves you a little bit of space instead of having to have a little scraper plane specifically for it. Now I'm sure a couple of you pessimistic thinking types are just saying, well, what can you build with just that? Well, the real question is, what can't you build with just that? There's a lot of stuff in the world that was built with a surprisingly small toolkit, and the only limitation is the way you can think it through. If you can learn to think creatively about things and think efficiently, then there is nothing that you cannot do. Think small if you have to, think big if you have to, just get the job done in one way, shape, or form, and honestly, there's not much you can't do with what you got here. I mean, with these tools, you could probably make any tool you would possibly need. If you recall from my previous beginning woodworking tool video thingy, thing I posted a while back, you'll probably remember me saying that you should probably buy tools that you can use to make other tools. You could definitely do that with the tools that you got here. But anyway, hope you found it enjoyable and educational, even if it's just a little too practical, but I, I mean, I'm a practical guy, what can I say? Anyway, thanks for watching. Arigato gozaimasu. Have an awesome day. Sayonara. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Get a pencil. <laughs> pencil is your best friend when it comes to layout and marking. Have a nice day, guys.